For improved system performance, long-term financial returns, and less risk on your PV projects, look to the proven performance of DuPont Materials and Solutions. Hello and welcome to this week's PV Newscast. Coming up this week, China dominates top 10 global solar manufacturers. Italy is set to reduce its PV budget to 500 million euros and the UK government loses its final appeal. First this week, Photon International has announced the results of its annual market survey revealing that six out of the top 10 global solar manufacturers are Chinese. SunTech Power won first place, and although Western companies like First Solar and SunPower will probably remain at the top, they're likely to fall down the charts in the near future and will likely end up producing the majority of their cells in Asia. Photon International believes Chinese cell manufacturers will continue to dominate throughout the rest of this year. Drafts of Italy's Fifth Energy Act have been circulated around the internet. The industry is bracing itself because rumours claim the solar budget will be cut to 500 million euros with an installation cap of 400 megawatts. The leaked reports also claim the Ministry of Energy and Economy has limited spending to 10 million euros for building integrated building projects, 10 million for concentrated photovoltaics and 80 million for photovoltaic plants. While other countries may have conceded to the demands of their governments, the UK solar industry has received a thumbs up from the country's Supreme Court, which has rejected the government's appeal over cuts to the domestic feed-in tariff. In the latest of three court cases, judges upheld the decision of a judicial review that ruled the Department of Energy and Climate Change's proposed revisions to the feed-in tariff, which were announced by MP Greg Barker at the Solar Power UK event in Birmingham, were legally flawed. The Supreme Court's decision is final and the government has confirmed it will not be taking the appeal further. The court's verdict marks the end of a four-month period of uncertainty for the UK solar market. During this time, installers of solar PV in the UK were unable to tell customers what feed-in tariff rate they would receive for their installation. The ruling means that all systems installed between December the 12th, 2011 and March the 3rd, 2012, will receive the original higher feed-in tariff rates for 25 years. The result means that over 60,000 installs will be eligible for bumper feed-in tariff rates as high as 45.5 pence per kilowatt hour. The Polysilicon and Wafer Supply Chain Quarterly Report by NPD Solarbus highlights the fact that PV polysilicon and wafer prices dropped by nearly 50% in 2011. And with demand for solar systems expected to either stay fixed or drop further, polysilicon and wafer revenues will most likely follow suit. The report predicts that revenues for polysilicon will fall by 35%, whilst wafer revenues decrease by 47%. This is most likely as a result of a surplus of polysilicon and wafer production, which has brought down quite a few manufacturers of late. SolarBuzz explains that polysilicon factory utilisation is expected to tumble from 76% in 2011 to 66% in 2012, while wafer utilisation is projected to decrease from 64% to 51%. SolarBuzz advised that in order for manufacturers to try and stay ahead, they must follow the example of China and consider cast mono if they plan to remain competitive. And finally, finishing on a high note, the union of Silifab SPA and ISC Constance has resulted in a 21% efficiency for large area monocrystalline silicon solar cells using a standard low cost industrial process. Other mainstream providers have reached 19 to 20%. Industry experts claim that eventually an efficiency of 24% could be reached. 
This zebra cell concept uses large n-type monocrystalline wafers that are back junctioned and back contacted without metallization on the side that's exposed to the sun. It's hoped this breakthrough will significantly reduce the cost of electricity per watt peak. That's about it for this week. See you next time for more of the latest PV industry updates and stay in contact online and via our Twitter feed. Thanks for watching.